people. This is your certified life and relationship coach, Coach Court. And today's topic is going to be my ex is in a rebound relationship. Before we get into that, though, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about myself. If it's the first time that you've joined me, uh, I am a sociologist. I graduated with my sociology degree in 2006. I obtained my life and relationship coaching certification last year. And I started Fruitful Seeds with the intentions on helping um, people have happy and healthier relationships by improving their communication styles and helping them understand exactly um, the differences between men and women in romantic relationships. If you want to follow my work, go check out my website, www.fruitfulseeds, with a Z at the end, .com, or you can go to my YouTube channel and subscribe, Coach Courtney Gatlin. I really would appreciate that. If you find this information of value, also, what you can do for me is go ahead and like, comment, and share. On to the email. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me this morning. Happy Monday, March. We're in a new month. Let's go. Okay, to the email. Hey, Court. I was hoping you can give me some advice on a situation with my ex. I don't know how much you charge for coaching. I couldn't find it on your website. I have different prices that I charge. Uh, depends on a lot, like income. Um, one thing I, I have a hard time doing is asking people for money because I know just how hard it is to obtain money. It's t You have to earn it. And people have a hard time giving that away. But you know what? I started to realize that you're charging for the outcome. You're not charging for, you're not trying to dilute people for their money. So message, send me another email and we can, we can discuss that. Um, I really like to know that the situation with my ex is a difficult one. We were official for a year and a half, but she became distant and started to get irritable over the past few months. New Year's, she went out with some friends and didn't come home and refused to tell me where she was. That is not a good sign at all. Later on in the email, I read it, I read it, I went over it a little bit already. Gee, I don't know why I do that, I'm sorry. Um, they, they ended up breaking up. But you know, it, it's, it sucks because the red flags were there and he, he started to see things. But here's, here's the thing. Like, chances are, he started slacking on what he needed to do as a man in order to keep her. And the only time we started to get all bent out of shape and start to go into panic mode is when we feel like we're going to lose him. Because some, for some reason, we put more value on losing things and then gaining them. If you were to have, you'd be more scared and and more fearful to lose five dollars than you would be enthusiastic to actually gain it. It's how the it's how the human brain works. We fear loss more than we 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 are excited to gain. All right. So yeah, that's not a good sign. Uh, she refused to tell me where where she was going. Said I was being controlling. And we ended things at the end of January. I said back in one of my other my previous videos, um, <laughs> January is like considered lawyers are like licking their chops. Divorce lawyers lick their chops because January is considered like the divorce month, really. Um, because a lot of divorces are filed in January. I and I, I have a theory behind that. It's not absolute but i think it's because a lot of couples have a hard time breaking up during the holidays they want to make it through they want to see if they can like re-spark things around that time and a lot of times they don't end up working out it just delays the inevitable um i did i searched a couple studies about that though and they said that january is like the hot month for divorces and 70 80 percent of divorces are initiated by guess what women 
Isn't that some? Just a little tidbit for you, just so you, if you guys ever wanted to know. Yeah, everybody wants wants love around the holidays. They don't want to be single. They don't want to be lonely for the holidays because you have a bunch of family events going on, and you want to be. You don't want to be that person walking in the fifth wheel with nobody. Um, and a lot of times you stay in those things longer than you should. Simply because of the emotional, you know who I blame? I blame, I blame the media. Because the media really, they're the, they're the ones who really bank off of the holidays and, you know, the, the Jared commercials and uh, what is that? The Lexus commercial has been running for years where some somebody's wife bought them this extravagant uh, Lexus for the holidays. And it, you know what it does? It like programs our subconscious to think, all right. Having a spouse and the holidays go hand in hand. If you guys are just joining, check out my new shirts I got made. You can go to www.fruitfulseeds.com. It's even got my cool little logo on the back. Let me see that. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough about that. Check it out. I'm excited about it. They fit really well. Um, so, yeah, this is, the, this is the time of the year where people, they need somebody. They want to be with somebody. They don't want to be single. But unfortunately, this doesn't work out. And they, and if you have things like things like kids involved, or you've got like a thirty-year mortgage together, or you're just in it for the long haul, it's it's really tough to to really let it go during the holidays because you you invest time, you invest time and money, you take time and money in buying gifts and setting up. Whatever you're going to do when the kids are off of school, it's better to be alone and then in an unhealthy relationship. That is absolutely true. But people, I heard a saying, people will do more to avoid pain than they will to gain pleasure. That's just how it is. It's just the way we're wired. Back to the email. We ended things at the end of January. Today, I saw her at the dog park with another guy looking like a happy family, and it hurt so much. I don't know what to do. This guy, I think he's from Cali. Um, so dog parks are in abundance out there. Um, I didn't even get out the car. I just left. It's only been a month. That really hurts. What should I do? Yeah, it's March now. Um, yeah. That is a punch to the gut. Could you imagine you've been with somebody for a year and a half and a month later you pull up to the dog park and you see them, you know, hand in hand with another guy. And it's, you wonder, I can tell you one thing though, it's an absolute rebound relationship because you don't just heal that quickly from a year and a half relationship and be able to separate, detach yourself. This is what happens. You ever notice that when you when you're in the dating game, there are certain people that you attach to, and there are certain people you don't. Like you, they call it. You know, it's like chemistry. You can have chemistry with somebody and just really vibe really well, but when you attach to somebody, it takes a much deeper um, emotional investment, and also takes a much deeper bond. And people don't attach all the time. It's not something that comes along all the time. It's it's kind of rare in order to meet somebody that you'll attach to. And this rebound guy, because that's what he is, he's a rebound guy, uh, they're in the limerence stage. I talked about that in one of my other videos. The limerence stage is basically a fancy word for the honeymoon phase. That's when your mind is doing all these crazy things. You're getting this... This adrenaline rush, you're getting this, this basically you're getting a high during the limerence days because every time you see their text message come through, their, their name pops up. This is when you're changing all their names to like heart faces and emojis. Um, that's when you're, you're really getting that buzz feeling. And when she realizes that this guy isn't all he's cracked up to be, which lasts for about, I don't know, I did say rebound relationships last from like two to four months. She's going to come back to earth and 
you got to do work on yourself. If you if you actually want her back, this hurts. So I know talking about wanting her back isn't even something that's in your in your orbit right now. But it's an absolute rebound relationship because you have to feel those emotions of a breakup in order to heal it. And many people don't. The people that don't take the time to feel those emotions and jump into another relationship right away, they're going to start comparing that person to her ex. She's going to not feel, um, feel as safe with him as she is with you. And sure, right now they're just, you know what they're doing right now. They're just, they're getting to know each other. And that's, that's very superficial. But a happy and healthy woman mentally, um, she'll take the time to um, heal herself before she moves on into another relationship. And she didn't. So this, I hope this is helping console you just a little bit because I know it hurts. Like I said, it's a punch to the freaking gut. Especially when you've been through so many things together. You have so many memories you've created. Um, and what a lot of gurus say is, take the time to heal yourself by, you know, staying active and getting out of the house more, working on your purpose. And the, when you, it sounds like you were doing those. You're trying to take the right steps and you pull up to the dog park and you see her just roaming around with another dude. And that's, but you know what? It's her, it's her loss. Um, what else I got? No, it's just her loss. Rebound relationships are, um, they're just band-aids. And you may not even want her back. After the relationships, after that's done, because that's going to be done, it's not going to last forever. After they come back, you want to make sure that you're in a better state. Because what you have to do is you have to detach yourself. Like, she broke up with you, or... We ended things. It was a mutual breakup. But chances are, if you're still having some kind of emotional trigger when you see her, then you're not over her. Um, because if you were over her, seeing her with another guy, you'd just kind of be like, eh, it is what it is. But that's not, that's not what happened. Keep your ex's life out of your mouth. This is toxic. Huh? Guess I'm confused. So yeah. Um, if you like my help, go to my website, www.fruitfulseeds, with a Z at the end, dot com. And I will talk to you soon. As always, I love y'all.